Hello, I'm George Cairns, and in this video lesson, I'm going to show you how to create an oil paint effect by using the Marvelous Mixer Brush. So we're not going to rely on filters, we're going to actually paint over the picture's pixels and turn them into smears of realistic oil paint. And that means you're creating a personal portrait rather than just slapping on a filter. So kick off by opening a suitable source image. We're going to go for a pet portrait here. So here's Poppy taken on holiday in Italy and she is about to be turned into a painting. Before I start to paint, I'm just going to set up the workspace by going to workspace and choosing painting because that gives me access to handy things such as brush presets, for example. Now the key to painting successfully is to build it up in different layers. So I'm going to pop down to the layers panel here and click to create a new transparent layer. Double click and we'll call this one Rough Strokes, just to help label it. It's always good housekeeping to have a label for your layers. And now I'm going to go up to the brush tool here, click and hold down and choose the Mixer Brush tool. And this clever brush tool smears the picture's pixels in streaks of paint. But if you combine it with a bristle brush tip, you get much more realistic looking brush strokes. So let's go to the brush presets picker. Let's scroll down and here you can see bristle brush tip icons. And as you move over them, you get a preview. And the one we're after is round point stiff. So click to select that and you get a preview of that up here. If you can't see this preview window, it's worth turning it on by clicking this little icon here. That's the live tip brush preview. Now to choose the way that it smears the pixels on the picture below, we can go up to the options bar, click here, and let's go for very wet, heavy mix. So we get some really wet looking smeary paint. That just changes the way it's blending the pixels from the layer below. We'll tinker around with this later to show you the different results. I need to increase the brush tip size, so I'm going to use the right square bracket and get a larger tip. Something like that should do the trick because we're going for fairly rough looking strokes. Alternatively, I can use this slider here. Now, before you start painting, you need to make sure that you're clicked on this transparent layer at the top here so we don't paint over the original photograph and make sure you tick sample all layers. Otherwise, you'll be painting with the foreground color instead of the photograph's original pixels. So I can now start to spray onto the screen and you get a very rough and smudgy stylized stroke. And the point of this particular layer is just to paint in quite quickly and create a very rough impressionistic oil paint version. Don't worry if you obscure important details such as the eye, the nose, etc., because we're going to come back and paint those in in finer detail later on. So this is just a really impressionistic rough and ready paint version of the hound. And I'm using a stylus to paint over the dog's bits and bobs because it's just more organic and intuitive to use a sort of pen shaped object to draw with. But this will work just as well with a mouse. So you don't need to cough up too much extra cash for a stylus, but it just feels more natural as you paint with the stylus over the image like this. The stylus isn't doing anything else. It's not pressure sensitive or anything. It's just enabling me to paint in a more organic way. And I'm following the curves of the dog there and doing lots of little short strokes just to sketch it in in a very rough way. And you can turn off the background layer to see how the image is shaping up there. It's looking very rough and ready. Turn it back on again by clicking the eye icon and continue to spray and draw. And these curves that you're creating, these lines that are following the contours and shape of your subject are something that you couldn't produce just by slapping on a filter. So it shouldn't take me too long to sketch this in, but I'm just going to jump forward a little bit. You can try different movements as well. I'm doing a bit of a circular move here for this part of the fur. And then straighter lines for the back leg, <laughs> like so. And I can turn off the background layer to see how the image is shaping up. You can see there's a few gaps there. So make sure you're on the top layer again and just click to keep painting over any of the gaps. doesn't matter if there's some gaps still left because we'll cover those in due course as we work through this photo painting process. So there's a nice rough stroke version of the hound. And as I dab, you can see in the preview window here that the brush is behaving in a realistic way. If the brush has softer bristles, you'll see them bend and deform, which is quite cool and helps you produce a more realistic looking result. So let's create a new layer for more facial detail by clicking down here. And let's call this one face detail, like so. And then click to make sure you're on the top here. Let's keep our round tip, but let's just drop the size now to a smaller option. I'm gonna use the left square bracket to go down in size to something a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna press Command or Control Plus to zoom in 
for a closer look at the dog's face. And I'm also gonna turn off the rough strokes layer so I can actually get the details from the original photograph layer below, and that enables us to paint in more effectively. I'm gonna go even closer, and we're just looking at painting the details of the eyes, the nose, and the key character and personality of the dog. I'm gonna go for the nose here as well. I'm still using a very wet, heavy mix there to create my old paint effect. And the nice thing is it's taking the colors and the tones from the original photo. So I don't have to keep changing the color down here in the tools palette. It's taking any colors that I like from the original photograph. So I'm spending a little bit more time doing a neater job here. Let's get that little mouth there as well. And because we're using a bristle brush tip, the texture is quite appropriate for our furry subject. We can do these lovely chops down here. And then let's bring out these key details there. And I'm following the direction of the fur as well, which is another way of getting a more realistic paint effect. I can go even smaller with my brush tip if I like to create finer looking fur. I'm using the left square bracket key just to shrink down the tip. Let's get those lovely eyebrows. Not very flattering for a lady, but that's what Poppy is. So this is a cool way of doing a personalized pet portrait for friends, presents, for example, which is what I did with another photograph of Poppy that features in the photo painting iBook. Space bar lets me move. And then when I let go of the space bar, we go straight back to the brush tool again. So I'm just creating some fur here at the top. Now, the interesting thing is if I turn on rough strokes, it combines with the face detail there and you can start to see that the drawing is shaping up here. Turn off rough strokes again and continue to paint to add more detail to our pet's portrait. Like this, right square bracket gives me a larger tip which covers more ground. And I can keep clicking and painting, moving up, trying to follow the key features on the face. So a larger tip covers more area, but a finer tip is better for more delicate detail. Scale down again around the ears here. I'm speeding the footage up a little bit just to cover the painting more quickly. Back to real time again. You don't want it to look too realistic and detailed, otherwise it just ends up looking like a photo. You do want to have a fairly impressionistic look to your subject so you can definitely see that it's a painting rather than a photograph. A lot of filtered photos just look like photographs really in the end. Ooh, let's turn rough strokes off. But because you're painting these strokes in manually, you're creating a personal painting that couldn't be produced by anybody else. Somebody else following this technique is gonna use slightly different strokes and they're gonna produce different results. Whereas if you use the same filter settings as everybody else, your pictures are gonna look very similar. So that's why this is a more realistic photo painting technique than you get just by slapping on a filter. It's more personal too. So these are the key facial details. You can also go to other areas on this layer and just add a little bit more texture, detail and definition as well. So I've jumped forward to the end and here you can see we're building up our effect in layers with rough and ready layers and then more detailed layers and they all combine to create a realistic pet portrait. So those are the basics about the mixer brush and bristle brush tips. But if you want to discover more about how to modify the texture produced by the bristle brushes and to change the way that paint smears with the mixer brush, for example, you can see that there's little bits of dirty paint from one part of the image sticking to the brush and then they get put into other parts of the image. So it's a more realistic kind of cross pollination of different colors. And that's to do with changing things in the options bar. And I go into more detail about how to do this in my iBook, which is called Photo Painting in Photoshop CC. That's available in the iTunes store or the iBook store, and it's for the Mac and for the iPad. So if you want to discover more techniques that you can use to develop your oil paintings in a more convincing way, then have a look at that iBook. And there's other techniques in there as well, such as watercolors using layer masks, um, comic book effects using filters. There's quite a lot of different effects, including pastels with erodible brush tips. So if you're interested in learning more, have a look in my step-by-step -step iBook, Photo Painting, in Photoshop CC. And thank you for watching this video lesson. I hope it helps you to produce your own oil paint effects.